So we have refrigerant 134A is the working fluid in a vapor compression refrigeration cycle. The evaporator pressure is 1.8 bar. So this evaporator is at a pressure of 1.8 bar. And they tell us the corresponding saturation temperature of, of the refrigerant is negative 12.7 degrees C. Superheated vapor exits the evaporator. So it's not saturated anymore, it's superheated. And it exits at negative 10 degrees C. It's still really cold. But at that pressure of 1.8 bar, the saturation pressure is negative 12.7. It's coming out negative 10. So it's superheated by 2.7 degrees C. That's the degree or amount of superheat. 2.7 degrees C. True? You see that? The compressor isentropic efficiency is 88%. And the condenser pressure is 9 bar, so the, the, the high side pressure is 9 bar, the low side pressure is 1.8 bar. And the corresponding saturation temperature is 35.5 degrees C for that pressure of 9 bar. Now it exits subcooled liquid, not saturated, subcooled liquid at 31 degrees C. So if it, if it ex exited as saturated liquid, it would come out 35.5 degrees C, but it comes out 31. So what is that? Four and a half degrees uh, subcooling? Four and a half degrees C subcooling? True? Now the refrigerant flow rates, five kilograms per second, what is the rate of heat transfer to the refrigerant passing through the evaporator? That's Q dot E. And that's going to be the mass flow rate times enthalpy 1 minus enthalpy 4. True? We've solved the problem like this before, and that's the equation. What is the net power to the cycle? That's going to be to run the compressor. That's going to be the mass flow rate times H2 minus H1. True? And then the coefficient of performance, COP, is going to be the ratio of what I want, a lot of cooling in the evaporator, to what I have to pay for to run that compressor. So the answer for part A and B, the ratio, is the answer to part C. We have a nice illustration. You can get a property diagram, uh, maybe a temperature entropy diagram, uh, and go ahead and sketch the dome. Go ahead and sketch lines of low pressure, sketch lines of high pressure. Go ahead and put on state one is superheated vapor at that low pressure. So it's out there somewhere. And then it would go up to 2S, but it actually kicks over to 2 actual on a dashed line at that high pressure of 9 bar. And then state Three, if it came out, saturated vapor would be over here, but it's slightly subcooled. So there's three, subcooled at that nine bar. And then it has an expansion over to four uh, ir um, through the expansion valve, irreversible expansion. So there's, there we go. So make a property diag a diagram as well as a table. So we want to put state. And then the pressure in kilopascal, temperature in degree C, enthalpy in kilojoules per kilogram, entropy in kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And often we talk about quality, although some states it's not defined. So state one. Well, we know the pressure at state one, 1 180 kilopascal, right? 180 kilopascal. And the temperature negative 10 degrees C. Well, knowing pressure and temperature, I look up the other properties, and so we find that it's around 245.14 kilojoules per kilogram and 0.94852 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, and the quality is not applicable. It doesn't, it's not defined in the superheated region. How about now state two? Well, we do it in a two-step process.
first go to 2s and then the 2 actual, true? So we know that we go all the way to 900 kilopascal and it's 0.94852. What fixes the state is the pressure and the entropy for state 2s. We really calculate the enthalpy 279.09. You can also calculate the temperature for fun and it's 44.6 degrees. It's not applicable for quality, it's superheated. Now consider how much work the compressor has to do for isentropic compression. That's the change in the enthalpy. And we find that that's equal to, so more work is required than, than the isentropic work. So we get for state two actual, the pressure is known and the enthalpy is known or calculated to be 283.72. So state two actuals fixed by calculation of pressure and enthalpy. We can now go and look up the temperature and we find that it's now 49.0. It's higher temperature, isn't it? That makes sense, it's even higher temperature at state two actual. Look at 2S versus 2 actual. Look at the temperatures of those on a TS diagram. Okay, um, this again is not applicable for quality. Now we go to state 3. What information was given? It's 900 kilopascal and it's subcooled to 31 degrees C. So we look up the value and the enthalpy is 95.00. That's a dramatic drop in enthalpy, isn't it? All that because of cooling in the condenser. And if you wanted to, you could look up the entropy, but it's not needed. And the quality, unfortunately, is not needed either. So I should have color-coded this blue because you look that up as a function of knowing the pressure and the temperature at state three. And then the last state, four, we drop the pressure to 180. Isn't that the pressure in the evaporator? 180 kilopascal. And it is isenthalpic, so it's 95.00. And uh, when you do that, you will find that it is two-phase. It's at negative 12.7 degrees C. I should color coat that a little different. Negative 12.7 degrees C. And the quality is 0.2886. So almost 30% by mass is now in the vapor state. That's not going to provide the cooling. The 70% that's by mass that's still in the liquid state provides the cooling. It, that's what evaporates in the evaporator. Okay, so that's state four was fixed by knowing the pressure and the enthalpy. Well, you take the difference in the H1 and H2, uh, H4 multiplied by M dot, and let me just kind of tuck the solutions in somewhere without having to mess up my page. Uh, um, Q dot evaporator comes in at uh, 12.5 kilowatts, kilowatts, and the W dot for the compressor, the power needing to drive the compressor is only 3.21 kilowatts, and the coefficient of performance for the refrigeration system is 3.89. Any comments or questions about that? Doable? Good. Here is a, a summary of the whole thing. And so if you're watching this or want to watch it later and re redo the results, you can do that, okay? And uh, so everything is, is outlined here. You should be able to sketch it on a pH as well as a TS diagram. 
I think you can do that. What I wanted to do though is I wanted to show you how I did this in Excel. I think it's pretty doable. It'll just take a minute. So here is the Excel sheet, true, that I copied. So this is my style to help organize the work. What helps me fix the state, followed by the state, right? So this I could put bold and center. The pressure in kilopascal temperatures, enthalpies, entropy, and quality if needed. State 1 does not have the quality of 1. Okay, so it comes in at that pressure and that temperature, and I use this call to this routine right here, right? Evaluate the enthalpy knowing pressure and temperature of refrigerant 134A given C3 is pressure in kilopascal and D3 is temperature in degree C. If I have any questions, I hit this and it tells me more about enthalpy kilojoules per kilogram. Refrigerant 134A is a function of pressure in kilopascal and temperature in degree C. SI units, and if I want to do English, I just have to put ENG as a third argument, which I don't do. And there's the result. So that function is very useful, true, to help you navigate evaluating these. And then the same thing for the entropy. Entropy is a function of pressure and temperature. The next one, 2S, I just take and copy this one. See how it's copied down? So that gives me the same S. Don't have to do it by hand, but just copy it. And then pressure is known. 900 was given. This is evaluate temperature as a function of pressure and entropy for refrigerant 34A using that pressure and that temp entropy. And likewise, enthalpy. True? And then state 2, what I had to do is I do some work on the side. So the work isotropic compression for the compressor is the change in H1 to H2S. Oops. And then the efficiency. Then you divide the actual or the isentropic work by the efficiency to get the actual work. So it's up, it's increased to 38 kilojoules. Use that over here to get H2 actual is H1 plus this work. True? All right. And then if you wanted to look at that temperature, evaluate temperature as a function of pressure and enthalpy. And then go to state three. It was the pressure and the temperature were given. And you just look up the enthalpy as a function of pressure temperature. And if you wanted to, you don't need this entropy. You can get rid of it. You don't need that S, but if you wanted to have it, you could put it in there. And then state four, the pressure and the enthalpy. It's just copied down from E6 and evaluate. Uh, you see the quality there is evaluated function of pressure and enthalpy. Calculate Q dot evap is the mass flow rate times the specific uh, heat transfer in the evaporator, which is H1 minus H4. The specific work of the compressor is the same as we calculated over there, but you multiply that by the mass flow rate, you get the work net, the coefficient of performance, true. And something I didn't mention, but you measure the rate of cooling in RTs, tons of refrigeration. How many people have ever heard tons of refrigeration? Couple? So if you say your house is 2,000 square foot, you want to provide air conditioning for it. In the city of San Antonio, typically for every 500 square foot, you need one ton. So if you have a 1,500 square foot home, three ton air conditioner work. 2,000 square foot home, four ton. 25, it keeps going up, right? Now, if you have a very new home, it's hot, it's tight, not a lot of leakage, and you have a, a very good insulation in the walls and the ceilings, roof and all that, then that ratio drops. You don't need such a big air conditioner to be comfortable. But uh, that's a good rule of thumb, okay? For every 500 square foot, one refrigerant ton. Well, one refrigerant ton is 211 kilojoules of cooling per minute. So... This just uh, is uh, basically calculating what is the refrigeration capacity 
uh, this system, it's uh, 3.56 tons, refrigerant tons. 